Okay, this is problem number 11.35, page 457. I'll read it to you. It says, uh, automobile A starts from O, which is an origin on the left-hand side, and accelerates at the constant rate of 0.8 meters per second squared. A short time later, it is passed by bus B, which is traveling in the opposite direction, at a constant speed of 5 meters per second. Knowing that bus B passes point O 22 seconds after our automobile A started from there, determine when and where the vehicles will pass each other. Uh, let's see, no, determine when and where the vehicles pass each other. Okay, so let me sketch this. I'll start with O here, X positive to the right, and A begins over here at position zero, B begins somewhere over here. But notice they didn't tell us exactly where B begins, right? They didn't tell us how far it is from the origin. Do you have any idea how we can figure out how far it was from the origin? Didn't they tell us a couple of things? They told us that the bus moves at a constant speed, right? What speed did they tell us the bus moves at? You guys can answer even though we're on the video. This video is for your use. So Five matter. meters per second. Five meters per second, yeah. So the velocity of B is five meters per second. But we need to be a little bit careful here. Because look, the bus is going to the left. Is that the positive direction or the negative direction? Negative. Negative, that's right. So we need the negative side here. Because the bus is moving at negative 5 meters per second. So you have to be careful about that. Now there's another piece of information they gave us about the bus. What was it? Something about time. 22 seconds. 22 seconds, that's right. So it took 22 seconds for the bus to go from where it began to O. Okay? So, uh, so if the bus took 22 seconds, then from these two pieces of information, we can figure out how far it was away when it started, right? In fact, that's very simple. How does the equation go for constant velocity? Do you remember that? Okay, I'll write it again. X equals X naught plus V naught T, right? And so, um, okay, so x equals x naught plus v naught t. And so, if I rearrange this, what I'm really looking for is how much distance the bus accomplishes in going from b to zero. So I'm going to apply this to a particular point, right? There's two points of interest. The time when the bus is here at time zero, and the time when the bus is here, which is time final. Okay, we know time final is 22 seconds. So let's see. What that really means is that x final less x initial, uh, let's see, divided by time final equals v naught. Does that make sense? All I did was a little bit of algebra. I pulled x naught to the other side divided by t, plug in the fact that I'm dealing with the final point and the initial point, okay? Now, the initial velocity then of the bus, and all that we should know all of this is for b, the bus. The initial velocity of the bus then is x final, which is zero, less x initial, which is, uh, no, wait a second. What am I doing? I'm solving it incorrectly. We're interested in x initial. That's the unknown. Let's try this again. So x final less v naught t final would be x initial. Okay? Now, the final position we know is 0. The speed is a negative 5 meters per second. The final time is 22 seconds. Seconds go away. And notice the negative signs cancel. And so, somewhere I've got this already written down. One tenth. One tenth, thanks. So this is 110 meters from the origin. That's where bus B begins. 
Okay, that was the easy part. The part we're really interested in is when bus B moves to some point, car A moves to the same point, and they cross at one point in time. That's what we're really interested in. So we're interested in this particular time. Let me call it T sub P. At this particular time, both vehicles are at the same position. And we'd like to find out what that time is, okay, and what the position is as well. Now, wrapping your head around this can be a little bit confusing at first. Uh, so let me make a sketch for you that might help. If you look at the position of each vehicle versus time, conceptually you can understand what's going on. So the bus begins at a position of 110 meters at time zero, right? The car begins, this is B, the car begins at zero meters at time zero, right? Now the bus, the bus's position decreases linearly with time. How do I know? Because the bus's speed is constant. The bus's change in position with respect to a change in time is constant. In other words, this line here describes the motion of bus B. In fact, the slope of this line would be the velocity of B, which we know is negative 5 meters per second. Yeah. So if two seconds go by, where is the bus? At 100 meters, right? Because it accomplishes 5 meters every second. So if two seconds go by, it's accomplished 10 meters. Right? So it would be at 100 meters at 10 seconds and so on. The car, on the other hand, is accelerating, and I believe we were told that the car begins, yes, the car, VA naught, is zero. It begins at rest. But the car has an acceleration. In fact, the acceleration of car A is 0.8 meters per second squared. So if the car begins at rest, then initially it doesn't increase position at all. Okay, it gains velocity over time due to its acceleration, but its path or its, its curve is going to look something more like this. Let me erase the velocity of B. Now that you understand that's the slope of that line. And you see how A's velocity is increasing because the velocity of A is just the slope of this line. Right? So the velocity of A continues to increase. Wherever those two points meet is the point in time T sub P that we're interested in and is the position where they cross each other. Does that make sense? That's what we're looking for. So essentially all we really need to do is come up with an equation that gives us the position of B as a function of time and another equation that gives us the position of A as a function of time. Once we have those, we can set those two equal to each other and find this point. Does that make sense? So we need an equation for B that describes the entire traveling of B and an equation that describes all the traveling of A. Okay? All right. Let me get rid of this bit here. I need some space to work. I don't want to get rid of the givens yet. All right. So I'm not going to go off of my solution because I'm not really thinking the way I was thinking when I wrote the solution. We'll, uh, we'll work it on the board. Now describing B's position is actually pretty straightforward. It's not all that difficult because the position of B as a function of time begins at time zero at 110 meters. I'm not going to write the units and we'll check the units as we go. But B moves negative 5 meters every second. So I need to subtract 5 meters per second for each second that elapses. Do you see how this works? Plug in one second, and I would subtract 5 meters from the position, and B would be at 105 meters. Subtract 2 seconds worth of 5 meter per second motion. That's 10 meters subtracted off from 110. B would be at 100 meters, and so on. Let's see if this makes sense. 
Well, uh, at a time of 22 seconds, 5 times 22 is 110, and B will be at a position of 0, which is exactly as it should be. Okay? So there is the equation of this line that describes the motion of B as a function of time. Now I would like to get an equation that tells me the position of A with respect to time. Now, does A have constant acceleration? Yes. In fact, we know that acceleration is 0.8 meters per second squared. So, in my solution, I went through the calculus to derive the result, but you don't have to do that. What you can do is simply use a constant acceleration equation. Now, I need a position equation that involves constant acceleration. I want to see if you guys can help me out and tell me what to write down. What do you think? Okay, let me make a note over here that I'm talking about body A because X naught of A is different than X naught of B. Okay, so let's just write X naught, like you said, plus V naught T plus one half A T squared. All right, that's the generic form of the equation. Now, be careful, we're talking about the initial position of A, so let's make that clear. The initial velocity of A and the acceleration of A. Okay, so I'm going to add these subscripts to make it very clear which body I'm talking about. Now there are some simplifications we can apply to this equation. The initial posi position of A is how much? Zero. The initial velocity of A is how much? Zero. And so, the acceleration of A, is it in the positive direction or the negative direction? Positive. Okay, so this acceleration will be a positive thing, right? So equals one half. Acceleration of A, we know, is 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Just plug in T squared because this equation describes the position of A as a function of time. Okay? So, simplifying just a bit, this is 0 0.4 meters per second squared times squared. That's multiplied. So, if, essentially, we get meters for our position, which is what we expect. Okay, I think we can safely erase this graphic now. Is that okay? Remember our goal was to set the two position equations equal to each other. Now I don't remember if they asked for position or time, but we're going to get both. Okay? So let's set the two equal to each other. 110 less 5t for the position of B is equal to 0 0.4, and I'll leave the units off for now, t squared. All I need to do is solve for t. This is a quadratic equation, isn't it? Okay. So I can use the quadratic formula to solve for t and see what we get. Now, can I use the equation in its current form? No, I've got to take it to standard form, right? So what I really need to do is either move both of these to the other side or move this to the left side. I'll just choose to move this to the left side. It doesn't matter which way you do it, it will come out the same. So negative 0.4 t squared uh, less 5t plus 110 equals 0. And so now what is a equal to in the quadratic solution? Negative 0.4. What is b equal to? Negative 5. And c is of course 110. Okay. Do you have the quadratic equation committed to memory? You should if you don't. Okay. Let me give it to you. T will be equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared less 4AC divided by 2A. Okay? So there's the quadratic formula. All I have to do now is plug in all the numbers we have for A, B, and C. I'll have a solution. Negative of negative 5 will be positive 5 plus or minus 25. I'm just going to go ahead and square b, so it's 25, less 4 times a, well a is negative 0.4, c is 110, I just barely made it, divided by 2 times a, but a is negative 0.4. Now it looks like we've got a problem because we're going to end up with a negative number for t. Well that's true unless we can select the negative sign here, and this result is bigger than 5. Okay, so let's hope that it comes out that way. Let's find out. All right. 
So let's see. I hope I have a calculator. No, I don't have a calculator. So pull out your calculators. And please calculate the argument in the square root. So 20, let's see, I can do it in my head too while you're doing it. So 4 times 4 is 16, this is 1.6. 1.6 uh, 1 .6 times 110, 160 plus 16, 176. So 176 plus 25, uh, let's see, 196, 5, 201, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we need the square root. 201. Okay. So somebody plug that in your calculator if you would. What is the square root of 201? 14.17. 14 14.17? Yeah. Thank you. Divided by negative 0 0.8. Fortunately, it's bigger than the 5, so if I choose the negative sign, which is the only one that makes sense, then I can calculate time. Okay? So please plug this into your calculator, 5 less 14.17 divided by negative 0.8. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, 11.47. I'm sorry? I got 11.47. 11.47. Anyone second that? Yeah. So this should be 11.47 seconds. Uh, looks like we've been consistent with all of our units, 0.8 meters per second, T would be in seconds. So yeah, we should be set. This should be seconds. Okay? So that's how long it takes for the vehicles to meet each other and cross. Now that makes sense because it takes 22 seconds for the bus to go 110 meters, right, from its initial position to the origin. So this makes sense. All right, now we can verify this by plugging the time into both of these two equations that describe the motion of A and B. So let's do that next. So the position of B as a function of time would be 110 less 5 times T. T is 11.47 seconds. Plug that into your calculators, please. And in the meantime, some, some other people Choose whichever one you want. Please plug in uh, 0 0.4 multi uh, meters per second squared multiplied by 11.47 seconds quantity squared. And let's see what we get for both of these. <coughs> yeah, 52.65. This one's 2.65? 52. 52. Okay. How about the other one? 52.565. Good. And that should be meters, of course, in both cases. Okay. So the vehicles meet a little bit before the center position because the center position would be 55 meters. Right. So the vehicles meet from the origin 52, roughly, and a half meters. Okay.